direct from the web, it's Billy Masters Live. And now, please welcome your host, Billy Masters. Myself. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Billy Masters Live. So I was backstage gabbing with my first guest because, and then I'm looking, saying, I think we're supposed to be live. So anyway, we are finally live. Welcome to Billy Masters Live. Today is Thursday, May 14th, 2020. And I believe I read some places, this day 50 in quarantine? I'm not exactly sure. But anyway, uh, welcome to the show. We have a great show, but before I get to this show, next week, oh my God, what shows? Tuesday, next Tuesday, Michelle Lee and Lainey Kazan. It's a piece of telling our first guest. Speaking of, we were just talking about this. So Lainey, Lainey Kazan, Michelle Lee, best friends. There's the whole seesaw drama. There's their whole independent career. So that's going to be a very dishy show. And then next Thursday, now, look, I don't know how dishy she'll be. We're going to try. Gloria Allred. And then we're going to also have some surprise guests, as we always do here on Billy Masters Live. But... I always open with a little monologue telling you about some story in the past. And somebody wrote me an email because I've been pulling things out of the archives. Somebody sent me an email yesterday asking me about when I was on the Real Housewives of Atlanta. I was not a housewife, I might add. And um, it's something I try to forget. Okay, here's a photo of me from the show. So that's me, Candace Kane. Uh, oh God, Kim Zolciak and Candy something. I don't really know. Candy, whatever. I don't watch the show. I have to tell you, I don't watch it at all. So anyway, here is what happened. Kim Zolciak, you know, the big one that kind of looks like she could be a transy, but she's not. But, you know, the other one next to her is whatever. Okay. And the one that, and Candace Kane looks more like a woman than Kim Zolciak. Just saying, because I was close. Anyway, so. The white party in Palm Springs is like the first weekend in April or May or something. It's, it used to be on Easter weekend. Now it's whenever it is. And it's Jeffrey Sanker's big circuit party. And I was asked to do uh, white carpet because it's the white party. I was asked to do white carpet arrivals and interview people and just be fun and a host and whatever and be silly. Basically what I do here. So, um, okay, I was doing it with Candace Kane, and I will point out I was still the more feminine one. Anyway, so I'm doing this with Candace Kane, and we knew that Kim Zolciak might come, you know, as the performers might come and talk to us on the white carpet. Fine, I can talk to anybody. And a Bravo producer came up to me maybe a half hour before she showed up and said to me, whispered in my ear, did you know that Kim Zolciak had had a relationship with lesbian DJ Tracy Young? I didn't know that because I don't know anything about these real housewives. But I said, well, all right, that's interesting because, you know, she was married to like Big Daddy or something and had a kid and whatever. But, you know, okay, so she had been in a relationship with another woman at some point. So the producer from Bravo said to me, we'd really like to get something about that on camera. If you could bring it up, you'd definitely be on the show. And I'm like, well, if it comes up, whatever. So there's a hair. So anyway, so then they said, if you can get it to come up and you really get her to say something, we might bring you back as a recurring person, like the resident gossip column. And I thought, okay, well, that would be fun. Whatever. Bravo. Anyway, okay. So here's the clip. Here is what happened. Where is the clip? Is this the clip? Oh, that's okay. This is the clip. Okay, here we go. I don't have a producer. Just so you know, we're doing this on our own. Okay, here's the clip. Hi, love. Thank you. The white 
party is an all weekend event consisting of That's several Kim. parties. I'm performing real woman. tomorrow at the tea dance. So tonight Not real is Monday to relax and have a good time. Oh, Here I am. This is your first white party. Now you said you're single right now, but you were in a relationship. I had a connection with Tracy and we were involved, yeah. Yeah. No, and she said some nice things about you as well. I mean, I mean, but I, I mean, they, everyone asking, makes like, things like, 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 salacious. Sleep with. Like, what is that serious? Okay. <laughs> I did a life and style article, so I wasn't repeatedly asked about Tracy. So I slept with a woman. Big deal. Call it a day. Keep it moving. What else do you want to know? Great to see you. Good luck on the show, baby. Notice that she never comes near me. Never. And she says, I don't ask you who you sleep with. Ask. I'm happy to tell you whatever you want to know. I slept with them all. I didn't sleep with Tracy. Anyway, needless to say, never came back to any Real Housewives. Never heard from anyone from Bravo, except, okay, nobody knows this. Okay. They sent me a release to sign. I never signed it. So they're running clips of me constantly that I haven't given approval for. I could sue them for big money. I could be Andy Cohen next week. Hold on, let me close one of my eyes. Okay, anyway, that's neither here nor there. All right, today's show, let us not forget that if you are watching on Facebook, okay, uh, where is the link for that? Okay, if you're watching on Facebook, the show disappears. The show disappears from Facebook Live. Uh, about 20 minutes in, 25 minutes in, you've got to watch it on YouTube. If you need the link, go to billymasters.tv and just sign up and you'll get the link. So just letting you know, Facebook, you can go there now. Go to YouTube, watch the show, because YouTube's a little bit better for us than uh, Facebook. We get nothing from Facebook. All right, my first guest is... You know, you don't get to say this, and she's so approachable and normal, you don't even think this. This, kids, is a Broadway legend. She has done so much more than even I realized. I cannot believe it, but she has always been warm, approachable. I have seen fans line up to meet her. She will talk to every single one. One of the great ladies of Broadway and real life. Oh, please give it up, Miss Faith Prince. Howdy, Faith. Billy! <laughs> How are you? First off, are you in a bar? What is the bar behind you? What is what? Oh, the bar. Oh, that's just bar. my little 1920s bar. I just thought, oh, how decadent. I'll sit and think oh, of that. <laughs> I love it. And so if you get thirsty, Pretend we're having a martini, you know, even though I, it's I drink constantly noon here. It's noon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right. So can I to ask you a question? So two people wrote me this morning claiming that you are their own. One was on the East Coast. Is it a Carolina that is in the town you grew up in? I'm not sure where we would. Where did you grow up? Like uh, Lynchburg well, or something? Yeah, Lynchburg is where I grew up most of my life, but I was born in Augusta, Georgia. Oh. Me and me and Lawrence Fishburne, actually. And um, You're so similar. <laughs> we are. We've actually been <laughs> in a show together. I love him. Um, I lived there for six years, and then I moved to Lynchburg, mm -hmm. and then lived the rest of my life till I went away to college. So when when you when somebody said to the pro, they wrote to me the pride of Sacramento. I, oh. Are you the pride of Sacramento? Uh, I didn't know that, but I lived. I now. well, how long have you lived in Sacramento? Uh, actually, twelve years, but nobody. Wow. Knew. And why did you move there? That's really interesting. Uh, my husband is from here, mm -hmm. and my husband Larry Lunetta. And he grew up here and his parents live here. And mm -hmm. um, we actually met in 1987 at the Music Circus here, wow. which is a an outdoor, it used to be a tent. Mm -hmm. um, right. That's what it was. I worked there and it was an outdoor musical theater and he was playing in the pit. His dad was the musical contractor at that time, which mm -hmm. meant he supplied the pits with musicians and all mm -hmm. the Broadway shows that would come through with musicians. And I met him at that time and we've been together ever since. 
That's fabulous. And what were you doing at the music theater? Because I'm in Boston well, right now, and we've got like the music circus and Hyannis Melody, you know, all these tents. Right. And this was one of those tents around the country. This was Summerstock. It was on a clear day. And I was doing it with Jack Jones, was was the big star. And it was my first starring with role. And mm -hmm. I made the whole monologue and songs about it in my first act, Leap of Faith. And it was how oh, I met yeah. my husband. And it was a whole sort of section. And um, little did I know that I would move back to Sacramento years later, because my husband is now the musical contractor for Sacramento. Oh, he wow. Took over his dad's company. So we were in New York for a long time, and then we moved to Los Angeles. And then when his dad said, if you want this job, you better come up and take it. So mm -hmm. at that time, our son was around uh, maybe nine or 10 at the mm -hmm. time, and it felt like a good place for him. So it just meant that I did all the traveling. I never knew that you did Clear Day, so you were Daisy. I was Daisy Gamble, yeah. Did you enjoy, first off, did you enjoy doing the show and did you enjoy performing in the round? Um, love the round. To really? To it like a duck to water. Um, and loved working with Jack Jones. I mean, yeah. he was, you know, uh, he had never done that much summer stock. So the lines mm -hmm. were a bit rough for him. So it was a bit like, you know, jumping paragraphs and <laughs> oh, <laughs> which I talk about my show, hilarious. Um, but we've laughed about it so hard for years to come. But at the time, it was, ah, you know. Oh, God, that's right. There's that it. story of him doing Come Back to Me. Take a boat, exactly. take a train. Yeah. <laughs> that was the moment. And so I just capitalized on it. Because a lot of times in my act, I'll tell stories. And um, mm -hmm. it was, and I, I said to my friend, Stuart Ross, who said, oh, you, because I used to tell him at dinner parties these stories yeah. and he said you've got to tell some of these stories in your act and I said I can't tell that it's about him forgetting his lines and he said oh trust me we can find a way for you to tell it and he <laughs> did and even Jack came up to me uh, a few years afterwards and he said I hear you did some uh you know album and told a story about how I forget my lines and I said I know Jack but I also credit you with my husband and my son he went all right let's sing <laughs> so just so people know, it, he couldn't think of any modes of transportation. He's like, take a mule, take a sailboat. Like, That's nothing. right. <laughs> he just kept thank God you weren't on stage for that. It was yeah. funny. Oh, God. Um, so I didn't know you had done quite as much as you have. I mean, you really have done practically every great role. So what I'm going to ask you is, is there a role you haven't done? Uh, probably the only one that has surprised me is Dolly. Mm -hmm. Is that one you'd like done. to do? Um, I'm perfect for it for a lot of reasons. Um, mm -hmm. I understand her. You know, she was a caretaker, a natural caretaker. Mm -hmm. uh, she was codependent. I'm codependent. Um, you know, <laughs> songs and Jerry Herman right up my alley. Um, probably that's the only one I'm thinking right off the bat that I've never done that surprised me. Well, since uh, but since we're talking about it, while you haven't done the role, you have sung the songs from the show, and we I do have, have a little clip. We have a little clip because why wouldn't we? We're always prepared here. Hold on, let's see. Look at that crowd up ahead. Listen and hear that brass harmony growing. Look at that crowd up ahead. Pardon me if my own spirit is showing. All of those lights over there seem to be telling me where I'm going. When the whistles blow and the cymbals crash and the sparklers Come on, knock it off.
All right, somebody. <laughs> For sake, come on. Can you hear me? I hear you. I can hear you. Can you hear me? I can't hear you. Oh, wait, hold on, hold on. Let's see if I can back. Do you have me back? Are you, can you hear me now? Hold on. Okay. Nope, you're muted. Let's see. Can I unmute you? Okay, hold on. Can you hear me now? Oh, my God, Faith, we got to get you back. Faith, I'm going to take you out of the studio. Click right back in if you don't hear that. Okay, hold on. Come back. Come back to me. Take a boat. Take a train. Are you back? Can you hear no, me? Yeah. I can't. Click, uh, um, click back. Come back. Oh, Jesus. Okay. Come. <laughs> uh, kick from studio. Okay. See, this is what happens with technology. Things happen. Sometimes you got somebody, sometimes you don't. Um, I assume you all are hearing me. If you can't hear me, let me know. I'm looking at the comments. Okay, no people can hear me. There you go. So, Faith, come back. Come back to me. Take a boat, take a train, take a mule, take a plane. All right. Um, I was sitting here waiting for Faith to come back. I'm going to bring in the second guest who um, is our co head. Yeah, I know. He waved, so he knows he's coming in. Um, a very good friend of mine. Oh, wait, hold on. She might be back. Hold on. Can we hear you now? Okay, good. Yes. So could somebody please book you as Dolly? I mean, that is amazing. <laughs> Maybe someday. It's it's so fine. I do so many things I love to do. I am never bored. Mm -hmm. I think, you um, know, I, in fact, I've been doing this great web series called Gallery View. I don't know if you've heard about it. I have, and it's really great. It's cute. And uh, it's funny. Um, it really funny, and I love doing it. And um, I also have been taking a writing class. I'm sort really? of writing a book. Yes, and um, and I full time teach master classes and and separately. So I'm never, I'm just never bored. You know, I what I like about you is first off, regardless, because I've seen you in serious roles, I've seen you in funny roles, you're so versatile, but you have a natural comedian's touch. And I've seen you very often billed as actor comedian. It Was that something really that you set out to do? Or was it a niche you fell into? Um, It's, it's funny you should say that, because uh, actually with the passing of Terrence McNally. He was huge in the, in that switch. Um, I've oh. always been a musical theater girl, comedy, you know, best friend, kooky, and then suddenly merged into sort of character leading role, which mm -hmm. I kind of liked. And I was always drawn to those women, you know, a Betty Hutton or a, um, a Ginger Rogers. Judy Holliday. Judy Holiday, Angela Lansbury. I mean, they could be the best friend, be the maid, but they they could also be the leading, you know, lady. Right. And um, I remember it was at the Kennedy Center, and I was doing actually Carousel with mm -hmm. Tom Wolpat as Billy Bigelow, and I was Carrie Pipridge. And wow. Terrence McNally came up to me and he said, "You're an actress." And I went, "Excuse me," he said. You're, you're an actress. And I said, well, thank you. I said, you know, funny girl, musical theater, CCM, Cincinnati Conservatory of Music. And he went, no, I see you doing straight plays and many things. He said, I'm going to have you come to the Manhattan uh, Theater Club and, and do some things and do some readings. And I'm going to write for you. And he did. Oh, and wow. um, then I started tipping over to different things. And, and and even Mary Rogers was very key in me coming in as Mrs. Anna in The King and I. When I oh, did wow. a love for her, and she said, I see you in that role. I went, really, me? I mean, I had been there, Donna Murphy, opening night. Never was in my head. And she said, nope, I see you. She said, you know, it was written for... Um, Gertrude Lawrence. Gertrude Lawrence. Yeah. And I went, huh. And I said, well, let me let me get together with your people, see if I can find that voice and, and, and a British accent that seems to be real for me. 
Mm -hmm. And by God, we found it and I did it. And I went on to do Man of No Importance with Terrence, um, oh, Aggie, wow. a catered fair, very different kind of role with John Doyle. Very. And also very, um, very stripped down, very everyday woman. Yes. Wife, uh, mother. Yeah. That was one of my favorite things I've ever done in my life. I mean, after that, I thought, you know, I think I'd like to try on a little Tennessee Williams, you know. I could, you know, Taylor, I could see that. Somebody I've always been fascinated with. And um, mm -hmm. actually, it was Lauren Bacall and somebody else who had come to see me. And they said, not since Lorette Taylor have I seen something wow. like that. And I, was, I didn't even know at the time. I was like, I knew the name, but I didn't quite, you know. And I went back and really studied some footage, and I was like, oh, my God. You know? And it's for those people who are younger and don't know, Lorette Taylor was the first Glass Menagerie Tennessee That's right. written it Man, for. Yeah. And, and there is a teeny bit of footage for a screen test where she doesn't even look like she's acting. She looks That's like right. a woman you who think, stumbled onto the set. Just being. Right. Just being. And she was actually acting. And that was very different for those times and uh I've, I've always wanted to do sort of a show on her which is oh wow me. that would be interesting she was that very interesting life if you read the tennessee williams biographies very interesting um Billy, I, I love that you know this oh no i unfortunately i know everything because i have a mind that i can't get with. i will forget who i'm talking to but i will remember lorette taylor's whole resume um, I remember when I saw you in Catered Affair, I drove down to San Diego, uh, primarily, God, this is so shallow, but I'll tell, because we were told that a really hot guy was naked near the very beginning of the show. Who was that? See, I forgot that. Do you remember who that was? Naked? I don't remember. Yeah. Or sure. Yeah. Naked. I think he was changing clothes or something. But. I uh, and I knew Harvey was in it. I knew you were in it. Yeah. But what struck me about Leslie you, Kritzer. Leslie Kritzer. Oh yeah, Leslie, right? What um, struck me about you is I had never seen you do something that was so subdued and nuanced in all subtext. Do you know what I mean? I'm used to you being be, being bigger, broader, taking over the stage. Was it hard for you to really restrain? Or were you able to just tap into the character and say, this is who she is? You know, um, I went through the doors of my grandmother. Mm -hmm. And once I sort of entered her world, and I had really um, watched the film with Betty Davis. Right. And so I had the feeling for the Bronx. And so my grandmother was very Southern. So I couldn't really go through her dialect that way mm -hmm. but she was an everyday woman who had everyday tasks and she spent her whole life taking care of people mm -hmm. so i understood like going through those doors and then she she never had the darkness or the edge that aggie really had but um, she may not have lived through what aggie had lived through well actually she had lived through more but wow. she didn't wear it like that which is an interesting mm -hmm. thing which is some of the things i've been writing about um, oh, good. She lost. She lost twins at a very uh, two and two and a half and three. They both died. Oh God! And um, so she actually had lived, but she never. I never felt that put on me. It was just sheer joy. I don't know how she did that, but Aggie had a lot more dark. She wore the darkness. So, mm -hmm. and I'll tell you, during that time, I said to my husband, "I feel like I'm." crawling out of a six foot hole every day. This was like really? three months into the show. And he said, God, Faith, it's that woman. You're inhabiting her life right. much, many more hours than you are your own. And I was like, you know, you, you are onto something. And I went to work that night. I was talking to um, our hair person and, and doing my wig, David Lawrence. And I said, mm -hmm. you know, I've been starting to feel weird. And he said, uh, now I can't remember the actress. She was the wife in um, uh, the Arthur Miller, um, where the man commits suicide. Um, death of a Salesman? Death of a Salesman. Which and I could see you was, playing the wife in that as well. She was starting to get weird. 
And she yeah. went to the doctor and he said, well, what's going on with you? And she said, oh, you know, I'm just doing a show and in it, I'm eight times a week. He goes, well, what show? She said, death of a salesman. And he said, well, what happens? And she said, well, you know, my husband kills himself every night. And he went, your body doesn't know it's acting. Right. And but some said, actors maybe can't separate. Maybe some actors, that's their process. Exactly. And actually, I saw an interview with Annette Benning recently. And because she had that, the role that she was doing was very dark recently on Broadway. And I can't mm -hmm. think of the name of the play. But she was saying how she kind of goes in at night and, and um, just kind of debriefs everything going down and uses it as a way to detach, I think. Oh, really? Which I thought was another way. She she gets into it and she she didn't wear it as darkness as much. And I thought, oh, that's interesting. That's another way to sort of do it. This doctor suggests that she watch a lot of comedy, that she go to the park, she do fun things to sort of counterbalance mm -hmm. the darkness, which would be another way to do it. But it, Were you able to make the shift when you went to Broadway? Meaning? Meaning how you not, approached not it. Were you off? still? Yeah, yeah, right. No, um, I, I have to say I didn't master it. I think if yeah. it had gone on longer, I would have had to develop some, um, you know, ways of doing it. It didn't really catch up to me till I was mm -hmm. in New York. But by then I had been doing it for months. Right. Um yeah. Yeah, I, I also remember on the flip side, I remember seeing you in Noises Off, the revival. Now, that must have kept you buoyant and joyful all the time. It didn't. That was right after 9-11. Exactly. And that was a scary time. And I think that actually people needed that, like they need these shows and your web series now. They need to sort of laugh and be silly and whatever, take their minds off of things for an hour. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's a balance. And I notice myself even binge watching. I'll sit before I go, I'll go, hmm, what world do I want to explore right now? What am mm -hmm. I in the mood for? So I'm very particular about what doors I enter. And uh, sometimes I want to sit in the sandbox of just where we're at and have another hard story tell me it's going to be okay or you will endure. And sometimes, you know, you want to laugh your ass off. <laughs> yeah, I have friends that I will call at night and they'll say, can we go a little dark? And I'm like, we're never getting out of this. And she's like, good, that's what I needed to go. <laughs> but, you know, on the show, I really, I do try to keep it up because I think that's what people want. You know, it's interesting. I was just talking, you're in California. And yesterday we had such an interesting situation between the governors and the mayors. The governor, one of the governor's health officials was talking about that we may be staying at home till August, which people don't want to hear and they don't want to accept it. And the mayors are like, just two more weeks because they know that we can get through two weeks at a time. And then, oh, another two weeks. And I think it's a little bit of a game. You know, I'm a girl that once, I like real. So if you say to me, I do too. This is the chess game. Right. This is, this is, it is what it is. Then I find myself rallying to sort of deal within that frame. Mm -hmm. I'm not as good as when you inch me along and it's never what we say it is. I'm not that girl. Right. Well, then I don't believe anything. Exactly. Yeah. So I'm, I'm more, and I think I was a parent that way. I was, mm -hmm. I was a realist, but I was, we're going to get through this. Pull up by the bootstraps, we'll find a way out. I'm not even sure what the way out is, but I'm telling <laughs> you, we're going to figure it out. Um, I remember I first met you when i have seen you a million times, obviously, but I met you when you were touring with Four Girls Four with Johnny McDaniel. And uh, here's a picture of the four girls. So we've got Andrea Ooh. McArdle. You, Donna McKechnie, and Maureen McGovern, is it? Yeah. Yes. And so, and I, um, I think we're all Scotch, Scottish. You don't say Scottish. Really? Scottish. Yes. There's, and you know, they're storytellers. Isn't that funny? They are, and it, you know, when you all told stories in very different ways, which I thought complemented each other. So, for a few more compliments, I thought I'd surprise you with Mr. John McDaniel. <laughs> Hi, honey. Hi, Johnny. How are you? I'm good. 
<laughs> it's so nice to see you. I first saw Faith, you know, as so many did in Guys and Dolls at the Martin mm -hmm. Beck. I'll never forget. I had Mark Hummel's house seats sitting on the, you know, the incredibly talented Mark Hummel had done the dance arrangements and he was my buddy and I got his house seats and I sat there watching you, Faith. And I just, I, my heart melted. I said, this is the real thing. And you know, there was so much, there was so much hype about you in that show. And so sometimes you go to a show as we all know, and you think, oh, everyone's been saying, you did not disappoint. It was so marvelous. It was, the, it was one of the great performances. It's so good to see you. Oh. And you so know, speaking hard, of guys and dolls. It's hard, but, his, it's hard to suck as Adelaide. Well, well, and just to show people what you were like, let's show a little clip of you as Adelaide. In other words, just from worrying whether the wedding is on or off, a person can develop a cough. You can feed her all day with the vitamin A and the bromo fizz. But the medicine never gets anywhere near where the trouble is. If she's getting a kind of a name for herself and the name ain't his, a person can develop a cough. And furthermore, just from stalling and stalling and stalling the wedding trip, a person can develop la grip, la grip. La post nasal drip with the wheezes and the sneezes and a sinus that's really a pip. <laughs> From a lack of community property and a feeling she's getting too old, a person can develop. Johnny, stop singing along. John is in the background singing. Now, did we lose? Can can Faith still hear us? Okay, good. <laughs> so excellent. Oh man, that brings it all back. Oh, uh, Faith, what was it like? Because that was, I mean, it had to have been a daunting situation taking on an iconic role and not only making it your own, but really bringing a whole new dimension to it. Do we lose faith? Well, I had, oh, I had done the role a couple of times. Oh, I'd done the role a couple of times before. And um, I don't, I have a great, <laughs> this is one of my, my things is anytime you enter into a revival, I always love to see what people have done. Mm -hmm. Vivian Blaine was amazing. You know, I listened to different recordings but then I start to sift through my own lens as if it was written for me. Mm -hmm. And there was something about playing the victim that didn't appeal to me. And I thought, what is, how could I enter her world? Cause she was smart. She had a full-time job. She greatly loved this man. She believed in him and kept hanging on, even though he had, kept her going for 14 years, you know, which right. at that time I could imagine was devastating because girls didn't really live with men. And she had lied to her mother so much so she said she had two children. I mean, she was desperate. <laughs> and right. I don't know, I just kind of use the reality of that to ground the hype of it. Mm -hmm. And it really did launch and, your career in a different way. way. Well, you know, but it did really make people look at you as somebody who could carry a show at that point. Yes, it was life changing. And, um, you know, Jerry had changed the bow because usually we were the soubrette roles mm -hmm. and he had changed the bow to the end. And that that alone put me in a position. Category. Right. Of course, so you'd be it, instead of supporting you were. Leave. That thing. So that, that was life changing, you know, and none of that I ever saw coming. In fact, I wrote something the other day for my class and I said, fame was never on my radar. Wow. So I was completely overwhelmed at that time. Not my favorite thing, actually, that, <laughs> but the work and the show loved. Johnny, what was it like touring with them? Ringing. Oh. Bells Are Ringing is a show that I directed in high school, and I got to see you do it on Broadway. That was a, an amazing role for you. I loved it. 
Um, Johnny, Thank what you. was it like touring I love her with too. I've always been a huge oh, Judy Holiday. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She was unique as you are, you know, you're you're just there's no one like you, which I love. What was it like touring with them, Johnny? You know, having these four strong, very different, but very funny ladies. Oh, it was hilarious. <laughs> We had fun. Oh my gosh, we laughed, and you know, all of us getting on the plane together, and just it was too much fun. It was it was great. It was great. I have nothing but great memories of that. Don't didn't you tell me after the Boston show that there were there were like two different cars when you would drive between, and you always wanted to be in Fate's car. So oh, absolutely. Who would? <laughs> but when we when we did what, Billy, when we saw you in Boston, we were in the middle of like. We were in a in like a really cool little like minivan thing, and we were going. Mm -hmm. We did four shows. We did like Buffalo, Boston, somewhere in Ohio, Connecticut, oh. somewhere. Yeah, and we were just we would do the show, and then we'd go to sleep, wake up, go. It was hilarious being on the road with those gals. It was hilarious. Really <laughs> Faith, did you enjoy being on the road with three other leading ladies? You know, we've all been, we've been through it. And I mm -hmm. think that makes for a very good tribe, including John. I mean, John's, you know, you, you've done things that, that were fantastic, but hard and grueling. And yeah. it's kind of like, you know, not a war, but I call it the Broadway war, you know, yeah. wars. Because it's a, it is a tough business. It's And you survive it. I mean, what isn't tough that's worth it? Right. Right. And and if you come out with grace, that's to me, that's the best thing. And when you have like all these graceful people that have been through it, there's just nothing better. That's true. Um, well, I know really, Faith, I you're know. real. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry. I, I don't know if you know this, but last summer, Faith and I did the Kristen Channel with Broadway boot camp together. Faith has done it before, and it was my first summer, and we had such an amazing time with these beautiful students in Broken Arrow, Oklahoma, which is outside of Tulsa. And uh, it, it wasn't that great, Faith, didn't we? It was just magical. Working um, with those kids and the fact that Kristen has created that camp down there. and Amazing. Just such amazing teachers and amazing kids, I mean, that really wouldn't – have this kind of experience. Exactly. If Kristen hadn't. We're taking yeah, a break. Trying, summer. Unfortunately, we had to, you know, cancel yeah, for this John summer. Spire, but sorry. Jack Wallace. Oh yeah, amazing. Um, Johnny, I should mention, uh, John is doing virtual shows. We're all doing virtual shows. Yeah. And he has uh, some artwork for Johnny's show. Look at that, Johnny. We just, we just we just covered Faith right up. <laughs> Gosh. But it's not on purpose, Faith. You'll be back in a second. So please check out Johnny. Johnny, where can they watch it? Sunday Tea with John McDee. I'm doing it on Facebook Live on my music page, John McDaniel. Every Sunday, 3 o'clock Eastern. So that's noon in L.A. and 5 p.m. in the U.K. And so everyone can watch. I got a lot of great response. I did it for Mother's Day. We debuted it on Sunday. Of course, the most important thing, does mom love it? She loved it so good. Thank and God. And then uh, I thought, I think I'll do it every week up until Father's Day. So between Mother's Day and Father's Day, every Sunday, um, I'm dishing a little tea and I'm singing some songs and uh, telling some great stories. And so I'm having a blast with it. It's great. This Sunday, I'm raising money for Broadway Cares Equity Fights AIDS, which good. really needs it now. So um, it, it feels good all around. Well, this is the time of year that Broadway Cares really needs it, number one, because of the coronavirus. Right. But number two, this is their fundraising period. Exactly. Um, there is Easter, there's Broadway Bears, which was canceled, so many events. So right. there's more need and less money coming in. Right. So and more money going everyone, out because everyone is having such a such a time in our, you know, in our business and every business. So we'll say it right there that if you have a little money, actorsfund.org, broadwaycares.org helps people out. Um, so speaking of tea, somebody who Faith is close to and who is known to spill just a bit of tea is our mutual friend, Johnny, you've never met. No. So we have Mr. Randy Roberts is here. Hello, oh, Randy, Randy your, your, your speakers, speakers are on. on. We're we'll getting get feedback. feedback. Not Randy, Randy. Hi, Faith. He's coming in. <laughs> oh, Randy, how did you guys meet? Uh, or maybe lower your level, Randy. Yeah, Randy, you're too good. 
There we go. Thank you. Uh, it's better-ish. Uh, <laughs> grab some headphones. Okay, well, good. I'll show a clip of you and Faith performing. Oh, fine. Hold on. And, and I will uh, mute his mic. Okay, there you go. Now he's muted. Hold on a second. Let's show a clip of them performing. Friends that are new. It's strange, but it's true. And what's coming next? Who's to know? With you for me. a little clip of randy and faith performing when was that randy uh that was february my right faith february can you hear me yes yeah, she's got a delay can you hear us faith, faith. after the video oh, we may, we may have faith. Lost faith she loses us after she's the video frozen. every time we show a video faith is gone i'll just bump her out of the studio she'll come back come here. back Wait, oh I okay <laughs> No, she She's said she couldn't hear. Okay. <laughs> She'll but, come back. She'll come so back. That was February 10th, I want to say, in Key West. One of With the Paul last... Sukuk on bass. I recognize Paul. Paul Sukuk on bass. And yeah. Alex, Alex Rybeck was on piano. Great. And, oh, sure. Uh, I know Julie, Alex. Julie Jacobs on drums. Fabulous. What a great group. John, I think we met at 54 Below. You were sitting at a table with Leroy Reams. Oh, my gosh. Yes, I do remember that, Randy. Okay. Gosh, everyone loves and you I, so much. It's a pleasure to meet you on here. Like Again. And I, we all know Leroy, and I know Randy. Right. You're very close with him. Um, oh, yeah. Faith and I met in Palm Beach after one of her shows at The Colony. We have mutual oh, friends. Oh, sure. So John Cox and Peter Perry. I don't know if you know them, John. Um, two supporters of the arts, great guys, and they right. introduced us, and Faith and I met and clinked and chatted a little bit, and then I ran into her after another P-Town. show. P-Town. Uh, Wasn't no, P-Town you met? Well, no, oh, we, right. we met in Palm Beach, then I saw her again in New York at 54 Below, just in the audience, and then mm -hmm. she was going to be in P-Town this last summer, and I was going to be up there for three days, and we've been in touch, and she was going to come down and do one of the big shows that I put on. And we just couldn't get in touch with each other. Like I would leave a message and she would leave a message. And then I had to book things. So Hold I'm on. Sorry. We got Faith oh. back. Faith, you can hear us, right? Can you hear? You there, girl? Can, can you hear? Yes, she can hear. She's pl plotting. Randy's telling no. us about yeah, you guys very, meeting. It's kind of spotty. So I'm going to. Okay, that's okay. I don't know if anybody else is having that. That's all right. Just We've got you now. Sit there and look pretty. <laughs> Um, um so, oh god. Go ahead. We uh I went to I was gonna be in P Town when she was there and we had dinner and it's the first time we spent any amount of time with each other and we realized we kind of knew each other. But oh, beyond great. what one would think quickly, and it wasn't one of those, oh I know you, let's keep in touch. And you don't. We kept in touch, she came down and did the show, she met my family. My family adopted her. Oh, Faith, Bobby Nesbitt just popped on. That Key West show was fabulous, he said. <laughs> uh, hey, Bobby's a local, well, he here in San Francisco and Germany. Anyway, he's a wonderful pianist. John, do you know Bobby Nesbitt? I do, just a little bit. Didn't he move to Fort Lauderdale? No, I... he's a, no, you're thinking of Bobby Pico. Yes, I am. Thank you very much. So Bo Bobby, Nesbitt <laughs> is a, uh, Bobby Nesbitt's on the more of the Bobby Short Yes, right, right, he does right. Wonderful. He does a lot of great things. Anyway, awesome. Faith came down, did the show. She adopted my family. My family adopted her, and Faith and I have kept in touch. Love it. Nonstop. Faith, Love how it. did you like? How did you like performing with Randy versus the other three women? <laughs> Let's wait for the delay. It was like being with family. Yeah, I, I feel like I've known Randy a million years. I don't know what that is. We just clicked. We had a sensational time working together. And I, I think it was me, I suggested, I said, what about not in drag? And because uh, he does this amazing show and then he'll sing in his own voice at the end. And I go, oh my God, well, first of all, I love all your characters and it was hilarious, but I, I just kind of saw your soul right there. And I went, what about if the show with me isn't in drag? And he went, 
preferred that way. It's fabulous. <laughs> yeah, Randy, always we talked about this, is that you are so talented and versatile, but when you do the characters, people will focus on the character and not the vocal ability. I think it's a combo. They, uh, I always like to say the, the whatever face I've got on, the voice fits the face it's coming out of. Because mm -hmm. I never wanted to sing in drag. I never wanted to sing live in drag. I thought I'd sound like a man. And then I listened to a lot of women that I've, I'm not going to mention any names that sounded deeper than I did. So I think You're higher than B. Arthur. The, well, there's a lot of people are. Um, but <laughs> the voice fits the face. I have to say, too, his prep, the fact that he can do a show getting ready, like never in my life could I do that. Oh, you mean while and I'm even doing when my I makeup? Get to the theater, I like to be, and John knows this too. I like to be at the theater at the last minute before I walk on stage. I'm one of those girls, and so we just we had to negotiate those two things because Randy loves to get to the theater, set his thing up, have his camera, talk to everybody while he's doing makeup. <laughs> I like to be in my hotel room doing everything. I walk out, get in the car, walk out of the car, walk Whoa, onto the yeah. stage. It was hilarious, the difference. We, we had a, we had a two-day uh, um, negotiation of what time we would get to the theater. And so I let her rehearse early so she could have her, 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 her private time. And then she agreed to come a little earlier than she normally would. And it was okay. <laughs> she handled it. Um, Johnny, um, I know, don't you have a song for us, Johnny? I have a song for Faith. Oh, if okay. I'd have known, I would have had a song for Randy, too, but I do have a song for Faith. Well, it sure would be nice to have you in the show again. We really need your glow again on the great white way. What will it be like? When we can gather once again, when we can sing our songs again, we gotta have faith, faith, faith. We gotta have faith, faith, faith. <laughs> That's for you, darling. <laughs> oh, Johnny, I want to thank you for coming on and playing with us. Uh, I love you, you know guys so much. Thank Johnny. you, Randy, for inviting me. And Faith, you know I love you forever. And Randy, we'll have to hang out. I would like that. Okay, good. Uh, well, well Whenever Johnny we is. Can. I know Johnny is in Fort Lauderdale. You are yep. in Key West. We can make yes, this happen. Perfect. Right up the road. When I'm there, we'll, we'll all hang out. Perfect. What, what was that? Oh, yes. Yeah. Randy, like? Faith just said that it's her goal to have you on Broadway, Randy. I Johnny, That's thank you. I love you, Billy Masters. That's okay, my love darling. You. Just wait a second. Uh, Faith, uh, Johnny, I will talk to you soon. Thank you for Much playing. Love. See you. Bye, sweetheart. Faith, can you hear me? Am I there still? Is she hearing me, Faith? Or is there that delay? Faith can hear. Oh, okay. She's just out of the screen. Yeah, but she'll we come only up. see half of Faith. There Hold on, is. I'll nope. get her. Nope. There she is. There okay. 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 Uh, Faith. Um, there we go. Oh, all right, we are hearing things. Every position is different. I know. With that, that is the title of my autobiography. So, That's not fine. every position is is um <laughs> is uh, is practical. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, Faith, what did you have something going on at this time, you know, during this virus time, this coronavirus quarantine that you were supposed to be doing right now? A lot of stuff, right? Me? Yes. You. Yes, you. Yeah, I was going to do um, the Chicago Lyric Theater, the um, opera. Yeah. I was doing a production of 42nd Street. Stephen Mears was directing. It was me and Norm Lewis. Oh, wow. And um, we were supposed to start the end of April. And the production was going to be end of May through June. And I was going to do Dorothy Brock. And oh God! It's been postponed two years. Yeah. Have you done the role before? Never. Yeah. You know, I, to. well, you know, it's funny because you talked about that you would like to do Dolly. Have you done Maine or or Vera? No. Are they on your list? No. Mm -mm. You know, um, uh, actually, I do. If you walked into my life in my show um i th i actually think i'd be a good main they wanted me to do gooch years ago and i was like <laughs> no, no. 
Not so much. Not so much. Um, but um, I, I do think that actually would be a very good role for me. I do too. And what you know, about? I, I what always a, was that girl. Mm -hmm. Now, what about? And again, talking, we had spoken earlier about the darkness. What about Gypsy? What about Gypsy? Mama Rose. Oh, Mama Rose. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Is that on the list? You. Have you ever done Absolutely. it? Absolutely. I haven't, but when I did Jerome Robbins Broadway and worked with Jerome Robbins, he put me in the Moo Cow number as Mama Rose for a second, you know, because mm -hmm. they were trying out numbers. And I'll never forget, um, I was, you know, sing out, Louise. You know, I was going, sing out, Louise. And he goes, okay, so here's the deal. She's not angry. She's merely trying to get food on the table. Mm -hmm. And she is super charged about making a living to get these kids through life. And it is has no anger whatsoever. And I went, got it. Sing out, Louise. <laughs> I mean, it just <laughs> changed the whole. And I'll never forget he told me that. He said, it's a myth. People always think she's angry and dark survivor. And I thought, that I understand. Yeah. You'd be great in that role. Yeah, I think so. And didn't you, Faith, if I'm not mistaken, on Jerome Robbins Broadway, didn't you and Jerome have a little issue during rehearsal? <laughs> yes. It's a pretty funny story. Uh, Go ahead. You have to know, it was six months into the production, and um, we hadn't had an audience to see any of our shows. We were we were literally rehearsing for six months. Wow. And he loved finishing the day with Gimmick because that was his favorite, favorite number. And he said, oh, let's run the scene. And he started snapping his fingers during the scene, which meant he wanted me to pick up the tempo. And you mm -hmm. know how you just snap? And I looked <laughs> I at him do. and I said, no. It's fine. It needs the pause. And he goes, no, it doesn't. And I went, yes, it, it does. But you wouldn't know that, sir, because we haven't had an audience for six months. I said, I think it might get a big laugh. And I don't, I mean, nobody ever said anything back to him, ever. And he's in went, front of the I whole company. I just don't even know where I'm at, you know? Yeah. And so the whole company is uh, watching yes. this. Yeah. And Paul Gimignani was the musical director at that time. He came over to me and he goes, Faith, you have the balls of God. And I said, <laughs> no, I don't really. But he needs to let go now. He needs to let go. He needs to let go of control. And I said, you know. and, and Mama's got to let go. After me, he goes, tell him he doesn't articulate. I said, I'm not telling him a Hey. <laughs> Anyways, I waited for my pink slip the whole day. Didn't get it. Good. Went to a party that night at Debbie Gravit's house. Mm -hmm. And first person I see, Jerome Robbins. And he looks at me and I look at him and he looks at me and I look at him. And he said, Merry Christmas. And I said, Merry Christmas. He said, the next time we have a row, could we talk about it? I've been upset all day. Oh, and wow. I said, yes, sir, we can. Absolutely. And you know, we were really so close after that. And he came up to me and purchased the first uh, performance and he tapped me on the shoulder. He goes, Faith? I said, yes, sir. He goes, take the pause. And just so people should know, uh, he has a photo of you in that number. <laughs> oh, and you're in the middle. Now, here's something that I don't think Faith knows. You and Randy have something in common. You, you, now, of course I do. Now, Faith, if we lose the audio after this clip, just come right back. But I'm going to show you a clip. Okay. Faith, I'm here's another one. And I can do it two together. <laughs> well, here's, an, here's, you know, you know, in the words of my good friend Jennifer Lewis to a director, here's another acting choice.
So saw Debbie grab it there. Are we hearing Faith? Hilarious. Oh, oh. Faith, that's Debbie Gravitt playing Mazeppa. For you. With me, that's Debbie Gravitt playing Mazeppa and Terry White. I'm... Terry White playing Electra. <laughs> and who are your strippers, Faith? You had I Debbie Gravitt. And who else I, was you with were you, Faith? Fabulous. <laughs> Faith, it was you, Debbie, and Fabulous. Debbie, who did Electra with you? Suzanne Fletcher. Okay. Oh, there you go. Suzanne um, Fletcher, fantastic. Um, Randy, yes. what other have you? <laughs> Randy, have you, I know that you have done some plays in character because again, people know you mostly for your one man shows, one woman shows. Well, I've done. Um, you mean plays in drag or out of drag? Yeah. Well, let's go with drag. Okay. Now. I've done some Charles Bush plays. I've done The Divine Sister and Die, Mommy, Die. And okay. then I did an original play by a, a, a writer, Darren Hagen, out of Canada called Bitch Slap, which is the story of Joan Crawford and Betty Davis filming uh, Baby Jane. I play Joan Crawford and Christopher Peterson, a local act, a Canadian actor. I know Christopher. So he did Betty Davis and... Uh, Vanessa, what's Vanessa's last name? Oh crap! I'm having a private moment, and you're all there. Vanessa, that's okay. Um, and, but so not a musical, because no, again, you're such a, a great in singer. Drag. I'm um, not a musical in drag. I did when pigs fly. Yes, well, I know. Did yep. pseudo drag. Pseudo drag. Faith. Oh, I take now, it back. I have no, oh, no musical in drag. Oh Jesus! I did Fiddler on the Roof and played Yenta. Yenta. No, it's is it Yenta? Yenta. <laughs> Well, if you if Fran Drescher's watching, you could play Yetta. After after <laughs> Ann Gilbert. Well, I know that's true. God rest her soul, Annie. Um, Faith, if you were going to do a show with Randy in a role, what would you see the two of you in? Oh, tell her, Randy. Go ahead. Can you? All right. He said. If you could see you and I doing a show, what role would we be playing? Like a, a book show or, or a play or musical? I'm thinking Mame, actually. And who am I? Vera, unfortunately. Oh, I could be your Vera, he says. Can you hear me, Faith? Faith, can you hear me? Very, very, it's very difficult. It's very broken up. For some reason, when we, when we got into the three initially with John, the sound has been weird. Sorry. <laughs> if I were to see a musical. No. No. If you and I did a play together, together, you and I, <laughs> what role? What musical would we do? Yes, 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 yes. And what roles? Oh, um, oh gosh. Hmm. Billy, Bill, Billy, think about that. Billy said, it's right there. I know, Maine. Maine and Vera is what he was suggesting. Yes, exactly. Yeah, we could do that. Absolutely. Sure. So can we book this? Let's get somebody to book this. Uh, all right. <laughs> so first we've got to book Faith in Hello, Dolly. Yes. And then we'll book the two of you in Maine. <laughs> okay. So in perhaps in Sacramento, and we'll all stay at Faith's house. She and she can cook. Are you a cooker, Faith? <laughs> yeah, we, we can't do it in eight, uh, ten days or whatever, though. No. We we have to no, have like no. a normal rehearsal period. <laughs> but but not six months. No. Not we six need an months. audience to know what's working. Well, Mame is <laughs> right. Mame is pretty much set. Although we would find new takes on the roles. <laughs> so Faith, now, go ahead. Oh, go ahead, Randy. Oh, Bobby Nesbitt says we should do Call Me Madam. No, did you not get that, Faith? Bobby Nesbitt says. No, I'll type it. I'll okay, type it. Thank you. My God, it's like a show for the hearing impaired. What? 
Shut up. I hate you. Uh, okay. Although I can't play the, the young, younger guy in that. <laughs> I think I'm beyond that. I'd have to play Cosmo. Faith, what Call about Call Me Man? Oh, that's yes. a good one. Have you ever done that? What, I love that. Have, Faith, can, if you can hear me, what has been your least favorite role? A role you just couldn't get a handle on. You better type it. Oh, shut up. I'm going to try something else. Hold on a second. Least okay, favorite Faith. Role? Yes, yes, yes. Bad, bad. There was a show called Bad Habits that Terrence wrote that oh. was dated about drugs and alcohol. It was with Kate Nelligan and Nathan Lane. Oh, and right. it was not a good production. Probably that was the least favorite because I don't really have a lot of them. I've usually loved most things I've ever been involved with, but that was mm -hmm. difficult. Was there and I think is it was, you know, the way we feel about alcohol and drugs was much different than, than in the 70s. Sure. And the 70s aren't far enough away to really be a period piece. True. If Faith heard that. Um, right. um, I'm really interested. Is there a role that you think now, oh, I would play this totally differently or I'd like another crack at that? Well, you're asking hard questions, Billy. Um, That's what I do. Because hmm. I've talked to many actors who said to me, that. yeah, there are many actors who've said to me, like years after playing a role, oh, it just hit me how I should have played that. I'd love to do that again. Nothing like that for you. I th honestly, I think because I'm such an old soul mm -hmm. that um, things I maybe from another past life or you know, <laughs> just just my own life, I, I I don't know. I I really don't have a role that I feel that way about. Wow, that's interesting. Um, what about? Well, you've also done I, long I, I runs. Think mostly, it's there are certain roles I would have loved to love to do that were past me by now because of age. I don't mm -hmm. tend to regret. I'm not a regretter. Mm -hmm. um, tell me about Drop Dead and Diva. And I've, never been, a, How did I've that... never been scared of age either. How did Drop Dead Diva come into your life? Well, um, Josh Berman, um, I, don't, I don't know if he was, if he was a fan, but Brooke, uh, Brooke Elliott, who played the daughter, and right. the, the main character was a Broadway girl. Yeah. So they tended to cast some Broadway people because, and oh, I love her so much. And we immediately just bonded because of the Broadway thing. And I had had some time in television and, you know, and she was like, finally somebody I can talk to. Cause it's not an easy thing carrying a show like that. And I had never gotten to do like a seasons and seasons of a show, but I had a, I had two pilots written for me and done Spin City and done different things. And uh, so we just got on. And I think it really was our musical theater background that kind of just made our chemistry as mother and daughter, even though we weren't real mother and daughter in the, in the show itself. There was a simpatico and we used to just riff. And a lot of times we would break into song. And I finally said to them, you know, if I couldn't hit the same key every time, what would you do? And they right. looked at me and went, what do you mean? And I went, well, to edit this, you know, I'm thinking it's got to start on the same key. And he, I said, usually you record songs and then go back and do them, you know, and, the, and then they started doing that after that because nobody was just not on their radar. <laughs> but I loved that. that you sang live, that you sang live on those earlier shows. I remember later in particular, you, Brooke, and Sharon Lawrence doing Lean On Me. Was it Lean On Me? That's yeah. right. And we recorded that. That was a pre-record, yeah. To them, you know, just so you know, these, these past few episodes that I've done any songs on, I've just started in the key that I know, and I would do it <laughs> the same every time. 
It was interesting. Um, but I love that show. He wrote so well. I mean, I couldn't wait. That and probably Huff on Showtime. Mm -hmm. I was I was sort of put into that after it was going with Oliver Platt, and Hank Azaria. Those those are two of my favorite experiences on TV. Mm -hmm. Randy, you were in. Were you? Was it a daytime show? One did you do something? Okay, how did that happen? Um, I had. Where was I? I had left Provincetown. I was in New Hope, and Mark Portale. Um, Our good friend from me, the Provincetown Art House. From the Art House. Faith knows Mark. Called me and said, can I submit you? Some some breakdowns have come through. Can I submit you? They want a share impersonator for a day on One Life to Live. I went, sure. So they said they want to see you. So I did my makeup in New Hope, Pennsylvania at Bob Egan's house. Drove <laughs> into New York City with a full face but no hair or costume on. Walked into ABC. Checked in. Went into the men's room, put on my share costume and wig, went sat in the waiting room with all the other actors going over their sides, and there I am in you know full share drag at two o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> and they said, um, "Come in to please come in. We want to see you." And I, there, I guess I was the first one, and it was a lovely meeting room, about a fifteen by thirty meeting room with overhead fluorescent lights, a folding table at the end, and a boom box. And I guess a, an assistant producer or something that was about as friendly as you couldn't be. A lot of, hi, <laughs> go stand there. And then this stunning man walked in and went, hi, I'm Frank. Um, and they got ready to play Cher's Shoop Shoop song for me to lip sync to. And I went, I'm sorry, I don't lip sync. Here, I brought my track. So I stood in overhead fluorescent light with no microphone and no reverb and sang Cher <gasps> and did my little shtick. And the assistant had never looked up from her clipboard. Frank watched. He ended up, he's Frank Valenti, the executive producer. Sure, but I know Frank. I did some shtick, and she happened to look up, and she laughed. And I thought, ah. If you can get a producer to laugh. She laughed, and then I, I they said, thank you very much. And I walked out the door, and she said, you'll hear something today, if it, you know, either way. And they were waiting on the set. There was another one coming in, and this person was late. And I went in the bathroom and washed my hands. Never show up late. As I walked out of the building, checking in was the other share. And it's somebody that's not necessarily known for share, but has done share in New York as a lip sync. And I said, hi, I introduced myself, and I walked out the door. And by the time I was driving out of New York City, Mark called to say they've offered you the, the role. And wow. then we renegotiated for me to use my voice, and they paid me more for the rights to my voice recording than they did for the day work days work it was fun See? i had a great time <laughs> um i really I, I think what's really interesting about the two of you and i know you both now personally but i met i only met faith a few times right. is that you are both really kind of direct forthright with a good sensibility about the job you love what you do but it's also it's not my life it's my living, not my life. Is that no. what did you think, Faith, as well? It's not my life. No. Right. It's, it, this is um, that's my job. You know, I, I'm very proud to be a working actress and be a part of it, but it is not my life. Yeah. Um, we got comments. Hold on. We've got comments here. Okay. From Paul over at Broadway.com. Faith. Uh, see, now I've got the camera in front of it. Randy, read it, please. Faith Prince, so good in everything, but I love to hear her sing Men on the Nick and Nora CD. Oh. And Richard Richard J. <laughs> popped on. Ah, <laughs> oh, Paul! Faith. <laughs> well, we'll get to him. You'll get to him, okay. Yeah, we're, okay. we're going through them. Okay, somebody else. Jeff, he adored you on Drop Dead Diva. Um, oh, look at Bobby Nesbitt also it. said, Bobby Nesbitt also said, call me madam. Right. Um, uh, Richard J, where's the one that Richard, well, there's so many that Richard J. I know. He wants, uh, her, he wants her bar sign. Oh, and he also, so Richard J. Alexander. There you go. <laughs> Can you read it, Randy? Lorette Taylor after Blossom Deary. 
<laughs> Faith, you can see the, the comments, right? Yes, she can see them. Okay. Um, and yes, Richard J., he wants I your love bias. Me Richard J. Uh, well, Richard has been on so many times. He's like one of our go-to correspondents. You know, that's the other thing I will say, is that so many of us, he, even if we don't know... Well, you know, um, if we don't know each other personally, we travel in the same circles. We all know. I always think that the good people find each other. Right. The, uh, the, yeah. There, if there's some, some, some truth in there. Just some? Well, I mean, if, if it's all <laughs> fake, then... Well, not everybody's <laughs> totally truthful. Even some we like, there's a little layer or two of wool. <laughs> well... I Go guess. ahead, Faith. Oop, now, Question now I think. Paul, who called in, you know. Is, yes. And Broadway. Um, dot com. Dot com. And um, dot, Broadway World. Which is it? Broadway World. I think he's Broadway. No, com. I think he's Broadway. Anyways, com. He was one of the first interviews I gave when I was uh, Miss Adelaide. And there was, there was a magazine called In Theater Magazine. I don't know if you remember mm -hmm. that. And sure. he was a kid. And we sat in this restaurant downtown in the, oh, God. It was near, um, must have been in the East Village somewhere. I think it was called America or something. It was in the teens. And he gave me my first interview and wrote this big article. And, and he and I have been friends ever since. He's, he's done so well for himself. He's unbelievable. Well, that's what I'm saying. The you know you, Randy, um, Richard J, Paul, Mark Sendroff, Mark Cortale. There's a whole group of us who all really know each other, and there's a reason we get along. There's that sensibility, that simpatico. Yeah. And I would I have to mention Faith. We had talked about this before the show began. She had just done. Uh, what was it? A month ago, a reading of Tale of the Algis Wife by right. Charles Bush on uh, Stars in the House. And it's not only is the scene stealing role, and she certainly stole every scene, but her dog kind of stole a scene. Sandra. <laughs> Tell what happened, Faith, because it's just too funny. I'll tell you, it about put me under. <laughs> Randy knows. I, I've probably not done anything live since. <laughs> and even today, I'm just having so many technical. I can't hear both of you. It's just, I don't know, it's my life. <laughs> <laughs> so during the scene with Charles Bush, the playwright and star, her dog tried to get into her bedroom and was scratching on the door. And she actually said, one minute, please. And walked. Yes, she she did. opened the door. <laughs> I went, there's a dog in the hallway. Hold on. In character. Oh, oh my God. In just, character. I, I was so discombobulated after that. I could barely read the script, you know. And then I remember you came back on stage with Richard's, Sorry. Richard's emails kept going off. Oh, the beeping. Oh, ding, I will never ding, forget. Ding, ding, ding. It was hilarious. I, I, I've not had a good... <laughs> I just want you to know, it's just like, even today, I can barely hear you. What's well, but, but you know, we love... We, it, we, it is, it's the pandemic. Well, look, I am going to say thank you to both of you for doing this and struggling through our technical issues. Um, Randy Roberts, yes. I know for a million years, randyroberts.net. When is yes. your next uh, live show? Is it Friday, tomorrow night? Tomorrow night, 8 o'clock on both my Facebook page and YouTube. Okay, but it's 8 o'clock Eastern. We got Eastern, people around yes. the world. Okay. Yes. And Faith Prince, you're still teaching. You're doing a master class online, I think. I am. I'm doing master classes. I've got that web series, Gallery View, that's just, we just did five and six episode yesterday, and they they just put a third and fourth episode today. Oh, good. It, so. I've seen one and two. Gavin Lodge, yeah, Ellen Marsh, and um, they wrote it, and fantastic actors. I'm the old broad in the bunch, and it's fantastic. I love being the matriarch. 
Well, I think that, again, whatever you do, you bring humor, you bring heart, you've been wonderful. We are going to get this Dolly and Mame off the ground. Even if we have to do a reading of the play, we can do a reading of the play. Okay, you work on that, Billy. I'm, I'm getting right on. There you go. Faith Prince just gave me an assignment. Uh, Randy, Faith, thank you so much for doing this. I adore Billy, you both. Yes, what? We could do it on, you know, on your... On your, Billy, uh, you're divine. Could. I love how great you are, and you take all the things that you know, and you make people like us just feel really seen and heard, and it well, really, really means a lot. Look, it's so important to me to return the love and joy you have brought me, and hopefully people at home are having a little laugh at our technical difficulties. <laughs> well, I'm sure they're having just well, as many difficulties. Nothing makes me happier. Thank you, Faith. And yes, Randy, I think I'll get on this. I think I think the play version of The Matchmaker may be in public domain. Oh. Mm. Faith, I'll touch you. I'll touch base with you. Randy Roberts, Faith Prince, thank you so much for being here, guys. Billy, I just would like you to take over my whole career. <laughs> <laughs> oh, in a second. <laughs> thank you, guys. Love you both. All right, guys, thank you for watching. Oh, see, she was saying she loved me, and I cut her off. Thank you both. Thank you, guys, for watching Billy Masters Live. Don't forget, uh, Tuesday, Michelle Lee, Lainey Kazan. God only knows how that's going to go with the technical stuff. And um, Thursday, Gloria Allred. Always have special guests. We love entertaining you. If you have ideas for guests, if you have suggestions, emails, send them to Billy at BillyMasters.com. Uh, we're here for you because don't forget, this has been Billy Masters Live. And if we're here, we're live. Bye-bye.